physical and chemical changes. So we're going to look at physical properties and chemical properties. We spent a fair bit of time with this on this in grade nine. This year we're going to go through a little quicker. So a physical property is a characteristic or description of a substance. Usually we use our senses. For instance, if I wanted to describe this object right here, I could say it's pink. Another thing I could say about it is it's smooth. So those are two physical properties of this object, but there's lots of physical properties. So we could talk about an object color, its texture, that's how it feels. Is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it slippery? The density, to get the density is pretty easy. You just need the mass and the volume and you can calculate the density. How it smells. Solubility. Solubility is the ability to dissolve in water. For instance, if I took a teaspoon of sugar, it will dissolve in a cup of water. But if I took a teaspoon of sand, it doesn't matter how much I stir it or even heat up the, sub, the, the liquid, it's not going to dissolve. How an object or substance tastes. Now, taste is an interesting one. It's definitely a physical property, but we never taste anything in a science lab. So even last year when we did the lab for this, where I had a whole bunch of substances around the room, you had to go and try to figure out what they were. I tried to trick you making one salt and one sugar because they look exactly the same. Um, the only way to tell them apart is to taste it, and I did not want you to taste it. Never taste anything in the science room. Melting point as well. Melting point could also be freezing point and physical state. So physical state means is it solid, liquid, or gas. Uh, a change that does not produce a new substance is called a physical change. So an example of that is a change in state. So if I took water and left it outside, like a cup of water, what will happen is it, it'll become solid, but it's still water because if I bring it back inside, it'll melt right back down and I get water back out. Or if I put it on the stovetop, I can evaporate it all into steam, but it's still water just in a vapor form. So changes of state are a physical property or a physical change. Another example of physical change is if I take my little post-it here and I rip it in half. <laughs> well, it's still the same little piece of paper, same piece of paper. I've just changed the, the shape a little bit. I ripped it in half. So by ripping something in half, cutting it in half, um, that's considered a physical change, not a chemical change. Okay, so a physical change is either a change of state or simply just taking a stick or a piece of paper and breaking it into two. If I took a block of cheese and cut a little piece off, well, it's still cheese. I haven't changed the cheese. That's a physical change. Next, what we have are chemical properties. So a chemical property is a characteristic behavior that occurs when the substance changes into something new. So that's interesting. Um, so a chemical property would be how easily something will burn or ignite. So if I take gasoline, well, I can make that catch on fire pretty easily. If I take a rock, well, even if I bring a torch to the rock, it's not gonna catch on fire. So that's an example of a chemical property. So it's things that we see um, happen when it changes into something new. And there's lots of evidence of chemical properties. So evidence of a chemical change include a new color. And we're going to do a lab like this uh, where you take two clear liquids and when you mix them together, it goes bright yellow. Well, all of a sudden it's changed into something new. How do I know? I saw a color change. Another example of color change is food. I love, you know, using food as an example. If uh, you have something forgotten in the fridge for about four weeks and you go, I guarantee you the color is not going to look as good as it did before. Uh, I just experienced this. I bought some ham in a sealed package and part of it was green. And then I looked at the package. There was actually a hole in the package. So a new color indicates a chemical change has taken place. When we talk about food, that means the food maybe has spoiled. Uh, another thing is production of a gas. When food spoils, you can smell it. It's, it doesn't smell as nice anymore. Uh, more examples. So they include a new color. Heat or light is being produced or can be absorbed as well. Heat can actually be absorbed. So we have those little ice packs where if you in first aid kits where you break them, you mix two chemicals together, they get very, very cold. You also have those little things that people use skiing where you, um, you shake them up, you break it, you shake them up, put them in your mittens and they give off heat. Those are both examples of chemical changes. So either giving off heat or absorbing heat. 
formation of a gas. And we have to be careful with this one. Simply boiling water isn't a chemical change because it's still water. It's just a change of state. But if you just mix two liquids and all of a sudden you smell something or you see little bubbles being formed, that's evidence of a chemical change has taken place. Formation of a precipitate. So precipitate is a solid. It's the scientific word for formation of a solid. My favorite example of this is milk. Uh, if you ever make a coffee or a tea and you put milk in, all of a sudden it's just gone all chunky, the milk is actually spoiled. And that's an example that chemical change has taken place in the milk. If you leave it long enough in the fridge, you pour it out, you can see all these little chunks. So the proper scientific name is precipitate. Precipitate is when a solid actually forms in the liquid and it means a chemical change has actually taken place. Now, for those of you at home, I know you don't have your textbooks yet, uh, but what I've done is I have taken a picture, I've actually scanned it in, of your homework questions, and I want you to turn to page 178 and do questions two to nine. Okay, so I've given you the questions, and I want you to actually read through and try to answer all of them. I've also, if you scroll down on the VLE, you'll see I've also put the answers up as well. Okay, but try the questions first. I know you don't have a textbook, so I'm supplying the textbook questions. Uh, and then if you get stuck or once you're done, go back and see how you did.